Hello friends. Before questioning some specific mental models, I want to explain the difference between mental models and conceptual framework. Everyone has mental models that we have absorbed from our family and social environment. So mental models are not bad. They are a fact of life. But if we don't want our mental models to run our lives, we need to become conscious of them, question them, and then adopt a conscious conceptual framework. The conceptual framework may include part of the content of the former mental model. The difference is that we are now conscious of what we believe and why we believe it. Both mental models and conceptual frameworks are ways of thinking that influence our actions. However, a mental model is unconscious. It often contains contradictions, either internal contradictions or contradictions with other mental models that we may have related to other fields. And it is repetitive. We tend to do the same thing over and over again, even when we have learned something different. In contrast, a conceptual framework is conscious. That means that we can logically explain it. It is in agreement with science and with universal principles. It is coherent. There are no contradictions. And it is also evolving. It allows for learning. This is how a conceptual framework evolves. When we are presented with new knowledge or new information, we compare it with the conceptual framework that we already have analyzing it using scientific evidence and universal principles to see whether we are in agreement with it or not. If we are not, we reject it and our conceptual framework does not change. If we are in agreement with it, we accept it. However, depending on the nature of the information, it may simply support the conceptual framework we already have it may broaden our understanding of some aspect of the conceptual framework leading to modifications, or occasionally it may completely revolutionize our conceptual framework leading to major changes. Now, how do we go about transforming mental models into a conceptual framework? First, it is necessary to identify typical mental models. We do not need to necessarily identify the mental model that a specific person has, since mental models tend to be widespread within a particular culture. In fact, it is better that the person does not identify with the mental model that has been presented, because that makes it easier for him in the next step in which he is called upon to question the mental model, analyzing its effects or results and its coherence with scientific truth. This step is extremely important. If we do not do this and simply try to teach something new, a new way of understanding something, then often it has the same effect of trying to pour coffee into a cup full of water. Very little of the coffee stays in the cup. First we have to empty the cup of the water and then it will be prepared to receive something new. That is what we achieve when we question mental models. Once people have entered into doubt about their mental models and are saying to themselves, well, if what I've always believed is not true, then what is? Then the time has come to identify the elements or present the elements of a new, coherent, conceptual framework. It is good to make a list of the elements and also limit that list to no more than four to six elements as that aids in remembering the elements. Finally, once the framework has been presented, the participants need to carry out activities to consolidate the understanding of each element of this conceptual framework. Now that we have an understanding of what mental models are why it is important to question them, and the importance of replacing them with a conscious, coherent, evolving conceptual framework. 
we will examine some dominant mental models related to human nature, society, and leadership.